Hello everybody, today's video is going to be a part 2 to my UCAS application video because I just want to give you a little bit more insight into the UCAS website which for internationals it can be really overwhelming and not easy to understand. I just want to explain the things that I didn't understand before I did my application. So yeah, this video is mostly for international students that want to go to and study in the UK and also for European students who don't have a clue how the system works really. You do have to know that when you want to study in the UK you have to apply to UCAS. The only thing is if you only apply to one university then you can apply to that university directly, not with every single university, but most universities you can. If you want to apply to more than one university, you have to do that over UCAS. So the first thing you need to know is what course you want to do, because there are different studies you can do, such as undergraduate, postgraduate and so on. And if you don't know what those words mean, then you don't exactly know what you want to do. And undergraduate means a bachelor degree, basically, and postgraduate means a master degree. So the undergraduate degree you do directly after school, and the postgraduate degree you do after you've already got a degree, um, for example, a bachelor degree. The undergraduate course is normally three years, you can also do a foundation year, so then you would study for four years. A foundation year, it's a little bit easier to get into a foundation year, the entry requirements are not as high as if you were to apply to an undergraduate course directly. The advantages of doing a foundation year are that you can get a bit more familiar with the course you apply to, that is if you are like unsure of what you want to do and what the conditions of the course are like, for example if it's really practical work, things like that. It's just basically so that you can understand the course a little bit better. It is also so that you get to know the university a little bit better. After you did your foundation year, you don't have to do your further studies in the same university, you can just easily go off to a different university. So it's really just to get a little bit more familiar with the system and with the university. And maybe you don't like the university or you don't like the area the university is in or something like that. So you can just go off to a different university after your foundation year. Then the last option is you can do a sandwich year. When you do a sandwich year, you do three years of normal studying and then one year in employment. You can either do full-time study or part-time study. But you can also do like an online course, I think. You do have to look into that a little bit more because I don't know much about that. But if you do part-time, obviously, you can do a job then as well. So what you need to know is that there are five choices of universities at UCAS normally. So you can choose up to five universities, but that's it. You can't choose more than that. The most important thing for a university to have is a name and a really high rank so you need to look up on the internet uh, the university you want to go to and what they are ranked because then it's easier for you to find a job later on because it's not really about the grade you get at the end but it's more about what university you studied at. Another thing you need to know is that universities in England are really practical and you, you do have to hand in coursework, of course, but they really concentrate on doing the things practical and, yeah, on that kind of level, especially when you do art. And also about art, after you've like finished off your UCAS application, where the deadline is always the 15th of January, and you do have to work on it a few weeks in advance because you have to 
get a referee and you have to write the personal statement. Those are the two things that take up the most time. The personal statement can only be up to 1,400 characters and like 47 lines. Your referee has to also write the statement and they need to have a few of your grades as well. So it's best to get a teacher and you have to let that teacher know in advance. And about the predicted grades, we don't really have that in Germany or maybe also in other countries. You can either not put in any grades and just leave the space blank, but that would mean that the university doesn't really get a good enough uh, fear of your qualifications. So I put in the grades from last year and I calculated my overall grade and yeah but it did put in that I was to get certain grades so that they know that those are not my final grades and also my referee wrote in the reference letter that we do not have any predicted grades at the moment. When you want to study in the UK you also need to do a language test. At some universities accept an overall grade you have in English language but most universities expect you to have done a certain test, either TOEFL or IELTS. I did IELTS just because it's from the English government, I think. The test is really expensive. It was 220 euros for me. You do have to take some time for it because you have to book it in advance. Preferably, you would have to finish it by the time you've sent your application. I have not done that because I, I've been quite late with finishing my application so I put in that I did my IELTS test but I did not put any scores in. I've heard that you can put them in later or contact the university or something but I don't know how to do that yet so I still need to work that out. About the IELTS test, the best score you can get is 9 points and most universities want 5 points, 5.5 points uh, like overall grade. I think that's quite easy and quite manageable to do because obviously if you want to study in the UK you have a certain level of English language requirements and a 5.0 five, 5 is not too high. The test consists out of speaking, listening, writing and reading but if you want to know more about that then let me know in the comments and I can make a video about that or you can just look it up for yourself. The entry requirements you need for each course, on the UCAS website they normally just say it for the UK equivalents, so you don't really have any idea for uh, Europeans or for Americans or for international students in general what grades you need to get and what they expect. So what you need to do is you need to go on each um, university website uh, directly and look up your country and then they will most likely have your equivalent from your country there. So it's a lot of work uh, finding that out but uh, at least you know what, what to expect then. And apart from these requirements you do most of the time you do need to come to an interview. Obviously that's a little bit difficult if you come from the EU or from any other country than the UK. Uh, so they don't they don't really do that for international students. But if you want to study something to do with art, then you have to hand in a portfolio of your work. Uh, you don't have to go there. Normally if you would live in the UK, then you would have to go there and show them your work and talk a little bit about it. For internationals, you don't have to go there, obviously. You just have to put it on a website or send them like a PDF file or something with your work and you can really choose however you want to send them. Then you can write like a few words if you want but I think you don't have to. Obviously I think it would be a little bit better if you explain your work a little bit. Then moving on to the last topic which is financing the whole thing. The cheapest you can study in the UK is £9,250 per year which is the price for the next year. At the moment that's for EU students as well and also for UK students but if you're international 
then you would have to pay a lot more. I think it starts from like 10,000 going to like 23,000. I've seen like everything in between and I think it can go even higher. You do have to think about how you want to finance that. For me it is a lot easier because I'm from the EU. There are some conditions that apply to EU students such as the student loan. I can get a student loan from the UK and that's under really really good conditions so basically you can get up to £9,250 per year which is what one year costs and then you have to only pay back if you earn over a certain amount which I think at the moment it's £24,000 per year and I think they want to raise it to like £30,000 per year or something. If you earn over that amount then you have to pay a certain amount per month back and I think that's like starting from like seven pounds and um, if you earn a lot more it can be up to like 30 pounds or even more than that. Yeah, that's not too much each month. Uh, like it's not a huge budget so that you can't afford living anymore. If you can't pay it back after 30 years then the contract expires and you don't have to pay back the rest. So I think that's a really good condition and if it is your dream to study in the UK then I would definitely look into a student loan and also look at how you can finance the rest of your living and don't let you stop the huge number of £9,250. If you really want to study there, then you will manage it. Yeah, so I hope this video gave you a little bit more insight on the huge topic of studying in the UK if you're not from the UK. I found that there were, was so much information. I had to th read through a lot, look up a lot, and I hope maybe I gave you like a kickstart with this video so that you know a little bit better what you need to do and what certain things mean. Also I will leave a link to the student loan in the description box because I think you really need to read through that because the conditions are honestly, I feel like they are amazing so please don't see the number and say oh god I can't afford it, I don't want to study there. Read through it first and then make your decision. I think that's all I have to say. If you do want to know anything in specific or if you haven't had enough information on this topic, then I, I can always do another video. So do let me know that as well. And yeah, I hope you guys are having a lovely week and I see you very soon. Goodbye.